Well, hey, y'all, and welcome to the video. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a little test to kind of check your level of sanity in your approach to golf. As the title says, our golfer is insane, and we're going to just test your level of sanity in how you approach the game of golf and how you practice. Before we get into that, I would like to ask you to please subscribe to my video. Hit that little button down there. Okay, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up for me. All of those things really help my channel out a lot. So, how are we going to judge your level of sanity? Well, we're going to use the definition of sanity that's attributed to Albert Einstein. And the definition is this. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's what we're going to apply to your golf game. And I'm going to give multiple examples in this video of what I see on a daily basis from golfers. And we're going to start off over here on the driving range. Now, I'm going to use a very common flaw in golf, and that common flaw is a slice. Okay, and what causes a slice is a swing path that is over the top with a club face that's open. I see people day in and day out over here on the driving range where the public hits and they're just hitting big slices over and over and over again. You get out on the golf course and they're just in the right hand woods all day long. They can't aim far enough to the right. So if you're going to the driving range and you've got a slice and you're not doing something, putting something on the ground, setting up some type of practice station to stop you from going over the top then you're not fixing the problem. You are doing exactly what Mr. Einstein says. You're just doing the same thing over and over again and you're expecting to get a different result. I don't care how much you say in your head that you're trying to come at that ball from the inside. If you don't have something down there forcing you, you're not gonna do it because it's just a habit. So what would I recommend? I love to put a towel on the ground Get that towel up next to your golf ball, excuse the wind's blowing right there, so that I can't get over the top. If I get over the top, I'm going to hit that towel. Also, at the bare minimum, if you have a slice, if you're not out on the, on the driving range using some type of alignment aid, you're crazy. Because what happens, the brain isn't going to fix a slice, it's just going to keep making you aim farther and farther left then the farther and farther left you aim, the more and more you're gonna slice it. So you've gotta get into a situation when you are practicing to make sure that you are not doing what it is that you do, okay? So get in there with a golf club, a ball up close to that towel, make golf swings, making sure that you miss the towel. Now, if your ball continues to go to the right, that's gonna be because your club face is open, but now that you have fixed the over the top or you're preventing the over the top, your brain might start to fix that club face. Okay, so here we go. Nice little soft swing. Making sure that I'm not coming over the top. Let me move you around to the other side and we'll show you one other thing that I see all the time. So one other big flaw that I see in people's full swings is that when they hit shots, they never get themselves to their left side. They never get their body rotated over to their left side. They hit balls and they fall backwards. They lay on that back foot. A lot of times I'll see people on the first tee and the first tee is right over here where I teach and they hit shots and their front foot, front foot will actually come off the ground. Well, if this is you and you go to the driving range and you're not forcing yourself every single time you hit a shot, to let that left foot stay on the ground, make that back foot come up off the ground and finish on its toe. Looking at your finish every single time and making sure that you're in the proper follow through, well then you're not improving. Your approach to practice, according to Mr. Einstein, would be a little bit insane. That would be the bare minimum of what I would do. The other thing that I would do, and I have a video out there about how to compress the golf ball, is I would put something like a towel again behind the golf ball about a grip's length. And I'm going to stand in here and I'm going to hit shots 
making sure that I miss that towel and hit the ball. Because if I fall backwards, I'm going to hit that towel. Again, if you're not putting something on the ground, forcing you to do what you want to do, then all you're doing in practice is doing the same thing over and over again, getting better at what you don't like. And according to Mr. Einstein, that's a little bit nuts, okay? So let me hit one here. Got the towel behind the ball. My whole job, missed the towel. Finish on my left side, back foot up on its toe, knees together. Let's go to the putting green. Okay, so now we're over here on the putting green. And I'm just gonna talk about the most basic, the most basic fundamental that you have to be able to perform in order to be a good putter, and that's aiming your putter face. Now, I bring this up because about seven out of 10 people from 10 feet can't aim their putter face inside the hole. So if you go over to the practice screen and you're practicing your putting and you're not using an alignment aid, well then you're not improving. So according to Mr. Einstein, you're then out there doing the same thing over and over and over again and you're going to expect to get different results which is make more putts. At the bare minimum, take a golf club and lay it on the ground getting that golf club aimed where you want it to be aimed. Me personally, I like a putting mirror. You've seen some of my videos with putting mirrors or a carpenter's chalk line is awesome. It's fantastic. Make sure you get something on the ground aimed so that when you get in there and you get set up, you know that your putter face is aimed properly. Then this will allow you to make a good stroke. If you're misaligned, you're not gonna make a good stroke. So fix your putting by doing something different. Now I'm down here by the chipping green and I wanna go over two big flaws that I see in majority of people's chipping. One is the size of their stroke never matches the length of the shot or the shot that they're trying to hit. Typically I see backswings that are way too big and Therefore, a forward swing that's a little bit too short, and they don't use their body. So I see a swing that's too big, no body, all arms. The other thing that I typically see when I see people chipping is that their follow-through, they've really let that left wrist bend a whole bunch. They're not using their body in order to hit the shot. Well, if that's you, and again, that probably makes you the average golfer, and you're not doing something down here when you're chipping to prevent those things or to monitor those things, then hey, according to Mr. Einstein, you might be a little bit insane in your approach to golf. So I want to show you just a very basic thing that you should do on every single pitch shot. And I see people all the time, they just, you know, I, the people that come down here and they just dump out their shag bag. They stand there and just repeatedly hit ball after ball after ball after ball. They're not accomplishing anything unless they've got good fundamentals. <clears throat> so one thing that I think that you should do on every single shot is just monitor the length of your backswing. Okay, Be very conscious of the length of your backswing. And then when you finish the swing, look at your follow through. Make sure that you've got your weight over onto your left side. Let your back foot come up off the ground a little bit. Look at your left wrist. And if you see your left wrist has a big, huge bend in it, okay, this way, fix it. So stand down here and do something different. Because if you don't do something different, just like Mr. Einstein says, you're gonna keep getting the same old results, okay? So here we go, nice little, control my backswing. Control my follow through. And one after another, I can just stand there and hit good shot after good shot. Let's go to the golf course for one last test. Now I'm out on the golf course. And I'm on the golf course because I hear from my students a lot when we talk about playing and what they're scoring and trying to analyze their rounds of golf that they have a hole or two at their golf course that just gives them fits, that they just can't play the hole. It's either they make a par or sometimes make a birdie, 
but then a lot of times they're making doubles and triples. And they just can't get over it. Well, first thing I ask them is, okay, tell me how you play the hole. What are you trying to do? Then I say, okay, well, look at the results that you achieve with your approach to that hole. It's either feast or famine, and most of the time, famine. They're making more doubles and triples than they are pars and birdies. So I say to them, hey, we might have to change your approach to the hole. And let's play the hole for a while where you've got a real good chance of making a par, but the worst you're going to make is a bogey. We eliminate the double. We're not even thinking about birdie on that hole anymore. So I'm on the 16th hole at Isaiah City, a golf hole that y'all have seen in my videos a whole bunch of times, par four, up the hill, dog leg to the left. It's got a bunker inside the dog leg, okay? So just let me use this as an example. If I'm gonna hit my driver on this hole, I can't hit my driver straight up the fairway because I can drive it through the trees. I mean, I'm sorry, through the fairway into the trees. So therefore, I have to aim this ball very much down that left-hand side, hugging those trees or close to those trees, and I have to screw around with that bunker. Well, let's just say that, hey, for three or four times me playing that hole, I've either hit a pull that's hit the trees or I've hit one not solid and it's in that bunker. Now I'm going to get up to that hole. I'm going to have a little bit of doubt. Now, if I drive it over that bunker, I know what my brain is thinking. Hey, man, Michael, Briz, you drive that thing over the bunker, you're going to have a wedge or a gap wedge into the green. You're going to give yourself a great chance at a birdie. So come on, let's do it. But then when I set up to that ball, that doubt creeps into my head, makes me make a tentative swing or a bad swing. So what I would suggest that I would do would be, hey, take a three wood and just for a while, play it up the middle of the fairway. Have yourself a longer shot into the green. What's the big deal if I have to hit an eight iron? What's the big deal if I have to hit a seven iron? I should be good enough that I could make a par easily with an eight iron or seven iron in my hand. Might even have a chance to make a birdie, but I'm definitely not going to make a double bogey. So if you're the golfer that has that nemesis hole and you keep attacking that hole the same way every single time, what does Mr. Einstein say? Mr. Einstein says you might be a little bit insane. And folks, I'm using this word insane as a joke. I'm using it to make a point. But the definition really, really fits golfers. And it fits golfers in what I see all the time. They constantly want to do things differently. They want different results, but yet they never, ever change their approach because their brain is locked in and their brain thinks that's the way that you have to play golf. And there are a million ways to play golf, folks, a million. There are no rules that says you have to hit a certain club off the tee. There are no rules that say you have to hit a certain wedge when you're around the green chipping. Do what's best for you. Change your approach and change the outcome. I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you've never subscribed to my channel, just like I said at the beginning, please do. I would really appreciate it. And drop me a comment below. Let me know if there's something been going on in your game and this video has helped you out. And do something a little bit different in your game to get some different results. I'll see y'all in the next video.